So for this video, I wanted to show you one of my favorite techniques using uh, pan pastels and alcohol inks on uh, polymer clay. And it's the technique that I use to make these pieces. Uh, this is the leaf one. This one was done afterwards with uh, Kato, clay, uh, Kato liquid clay and uh, a heat gun. And uh, same with this one. And then these little leaf tube beads that I made are uh, simply done with the, with the pan pastels and uh, baked. And then afterwards I've used uh, alcohol ink on them and sprayed them with uh, uh, Preserve Your Memories um, sealer. So it's a really fun technique to do. You can do them um, whichever way you like. Um, really useful and I uh, hope you enjoy it. So what I'm going to use for this, uh, uh, we'll do the leaves for these uh, leaves, is um, a football shaped cutter. And this is uh, called a leaf veiner. And I bought mine on Amazon. And they come in lots of different shapes and uh, sizes. And this is my favorite size. And it really wasn't very expensive. Um, they have all kinds of them. I think I only paid about three, four dollars for it. Um, I love this one. It gives you a really strong texture and it's perfect for this project. So you can use any any leaf shaped cutters that you have. Uh, this little oval one is nice. Uh, I'm going to go with a slightly bigger one. Um, so just very simply, just start cutting out some leaf shapes. And that's enough for demonstration purposes. So then I take my silicone uh, veiner and put the leaf on and anywhere along this, this uh, whole veiner works really well. So I often just vary where I'm going to place it. Um, just put it on, make the uh, sides match. You don't need um, water as a, a release or cornstarch or anything like that. Nothing sticks to the silicone. So just give it a good press and then pull it off. And for my purposes, I like the underside better. It gives me an, a nicer, stronger line that will work better with the pan pastels. So I'll do a few more of them. And the same shape gives me both the uh, the curved beads for the um, the two beads and the the one that I shape it more into a leaf. So I neglected to say that this clay is um, rolled on my pasta machine on a number two setting. Uh, number three setting would be good too. Uh, it's a little thinner. A little more delicate looking, but on, for this purpose, I'll do it on a number two. It's stronger. So I'm giving it a really good press, which actually makes it bigger than than my cutter uh, cutter size. So then I'm going to use just black pan pastel, and uh, I've tried a couple different things. Um, to, uh, to make it work. First of all, I'm just going to slightly press it down flat without distorting my, my, my uh, pattern. And if you don't have the SOFFT applicator that comes with the pan pastels, uh, I also discovered that just your regular makeup sponge in the triangle that you can buy in bulk at dollar stores or Walmart or wherever, they work pretty good too. So uh, for today, I'm going to use that. And I'm just going to coat the edge here with the black pastel, like that. And then just very, very lightly skim over top of, of my uh, textured clay. Just a little bit more, do another one. Thank you. 
So this gives me that bit of a bold black line that shows through the alcohol inks um, that I really, really like. So then once, once you're finished with that, then I'll take a piece of, uh, of uh, tissue paper, wax paper, or some, something quite thin and lay it over top and then just gently rub that color in uh, without smearing it. But this really, really helps um, bond it to the clay. And you can see how it's lifted off. So I'll make sure my next piece won't be in that same spot because I don't want to introduce any color in other areas. So really I'm, I'm not trying to get rid of the texture here. I'm just trying to to press that uh, pastel into the into the clay better. And it's the same as I did on the uh, Chickadee Journal. Um, it's amazing how much more the clay, uh, the chalk will bond to, uh, to the clay. Um, if you notice when I did the chickadee journal, right after baking it, I just went ahead right away with the paint and that, um, um, uh, like it didn't even need sealing. It's, it's quite amazing how well it sticks. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and uh, make one of the leaf shapes first. So I'm going to use a toothpick to help me get a hole. And uh, I'm going to just hold it up here and give it a pinch. And ideally, uh, it would be good if I didn't have any, any uh, pastels here because it would stick better. But you can work it and, until you get it to stick. So that gives me a bit of a leaf shape, and then I like to pinch the end so that it cups into a better shape. And then it can be baked like that, or you can take the toothpick out for baking. So I'll do a couple of those. So this is a round toothpick. You could probably will want a round toothpick. And if that stem gets too long, you can trim it down. So that's the leaf shapes, and now we'll do the uh, um, the tube bead. Now, for the tube bead, what I what I've done is um, I've covered a um, dowel with uh, double sided carpet tape, and uh, I've got a piece of it here with a new dowel. Uh, I don't take the paper off of one side, so just put your dowel on dowel on the uh, double sided carpet tape and roll that tape around. And uh, ideally, you, you should bake your dowel before you uh, use it for the first time. It makes a big difference. You might get some expansion, and if you do, it can sometimes crack your beads. So then I'm going to take, take my leaf and just quite simply wrap it around and press, press it over. Using the, the tip of the, uh, the leaf on top of the, um, the stem of the leaf, so the direction of the veins run in the right direction. And uh, so that's basically it. Now this goes in the oven, and then we'll do the next step after it's all baked. 
So while that's baking, I want to show you how you can use it also uh, as a pendant or, uh, or like that. So I'm just taking a, a stamp and the kind of stamps you're going to want to use would be ones that have lots of little lines or uh, what they might call an any uh, design uh, rather than having lots of flat areas. If you have lots of flat areas, you're going to have big broad areas of black. If you have fine little lines, you're going to have quite a nice, nice design. So this one is um, a stamp from uh, Helen Briel and uh, it, it works really well for this. So then I'm just going to cut a section here. I'll cut this smaller after, but I'm trying to save my white clay. If I go ahead and pan pastel the whole thing, it's not going to, uh, um, it's going to be dirty clay then and a little harder to, to use. So on this one, I'll use the S-O-F-F-T, -F -F the soft applicator. And the, um, the sponge actually works just as well, if not better, for this. But you need a fairly light touch. You don't want to go smearing it around or that's what you're going to end up with. So that's um, got the size, next size down, that's good. Okay, so then I'll, I'll cut this out somewhere that I like. And then I'll put this on a, a, a cut uh, soda can. Well, actually, if we're going to do that, we're going to cut it a little smaller. So when you're using these soda cans, you want to make sure all those edges are pressed down nicely. Or it's not going to be nice round, it's going to ripple. And then I'll just make sure there's no air bubbles tapped, uh, trapped in there. And then that's also ready for the oven. Okay, I've got some pieces here that are already baked and ready to go. So I want to show you a couple of different things. Uh, one is just using the alcohol ink straight on the leaf, which gives you this kind of look. That's just alcohol ink. And the other one is using a combination of Kato uh, liquid clay and alcohol ink. Uh, for this one, you'd, you'd have to use a heat gun. I'm not going to actually show you how to use the heat gun. I'm not quite set up for it properly. And really, if you want to learn that, uh, your best bet is to look up Debbie Carruthers. She's got a fantastic video on using the heat gun. Um, that's how I learned, and uh, you, you won't regret it. So uh, please um, check her out on YouTube and uh, her blog. Um, but anyways, let's, let's just keep moving on. So the first one we'll do uh, is just the alcohol ink. So I've chosen three colors here. This is one of those Michaels with no name color, but I think it's Sunset Orange. And uh, this one is Butterscotch, and this one is Green. And I just went with these colors because I thought they were quite leafy, dried, dried leaf sort of looking colors. And you're going to want a brush that you can just move the ink around with. And uh, 
have a little bit of rubbing alcohol ready in case you need to dilute it. Though I usually find I don't, but you'll want it to clean your brush anyways. And a paper towel just to wipe things off with. So I'm going to start with the green. And I'm just going to dab it in a few places. I'm going to color the underside of it later. Uh, we'll go butterscotch next because it's a. Oh, that's. Yeah, that's the butterscotch. Okay. And a little bit of that sunset orange. So then I'll take my brush and move some of this around without mixing it too much. If you mix it a lot, it's going to get all muddy. And really, I don't think you want to use more than three colors ever. Because you really um, up your chances of having mud. <laughs> so then once it's moved around a bit, I'll take my paper towel and blot some of it off. If you take too much off, you can put a little bit more back on. But basically, I'm pretty happy with that. That's a, that's a nice color. Now the, the other, and then I'm just going to let that dry. Uh, I'll turn it over after, and I'll do the back as well. And let it dry, and then uh, give it a spray of uh, Preserve Your Memories. And then I'm calling that done. So the other one's a little more uh, complicated. <clears throat> so what I've done is I've taken Cato Clay and... Um, a couple of drops of alcohol ink. I'm almost out of my butterscotch, so I'll make a little bit more of it here. So just a squirt of Cato clay and a few drops of alcohol ink. And stir it up with a toothpick. You get your intensity of color from how much ink you actually put in there. Um, but I find the colors are, are much more vibrant. But it's tricky because then you have to use a heat gun. And these are thin leaves. It's quite easy to, to burn them. Okay, so then that's where I'm going to use this brush, and we'll put it on this one. It's got a little clay on them. Okay, and again, I like starting with the, the lightest color, the one I want to have a little bit more predominant. And you just go ahead, paint right over top of the black lines. Don't even worry about it. It's, it's quite translucent, so they're still going to show. If you've got a heat gun and Cato clay, it's really worth um, developing that skill. Uh, I just love the way this looks. Okay, then we'll go into the butterscotch. Once you've used a, a brush on, uh, on this with the liquid clay, this brush is pretty much dedicated now to only liquid clay. You can clean it somewhat with uh, alcohol. Okay, now the um, the reddish color, I actually put, uh, it's the sunset orange and I put a drop or two of uh, chili pepper into it because I wanted it a little redder than the uh, sunset orange gave me. I don't want 
too much red in there, so I'll get some more green back there. So then you have two choices. You can uh, actually take this and pop it in your oven and uh, cook it um, on a little bit higher heat than you would normally cook your uh, clay on because um, Kato cures quite well at 300 degrees. Um, and then just hit it for a moment or two with the uh, high heat on the, uh, with your heat gun. Or you can take it right to your, your heat gun station, uh, keep it on a tile, not, not this paper here but right on a tile and um, and heat it that way and that's the method I prefer uh, this one came a little bit separated at the top but I wouldn't I would put my toothpick back into the hole so that I could hold it as I was heating it um, the thing is you want to make sure that you're always moving your heat gun or your um, or your polymer clay either by turn you know moving the uh, tile around or whatever. I often do them on an index card so I can spin the index card around. Um, you don't want that heat sitting in a one spot for too, too long. Um, so anyways, that's that's how I would do the uh, the liquid clay. And that's how I did the, uh, uh, the pendant. That's how I did this pendant also. So, just for something different, let's do this pendant, uh, just with the alcohol ink. Okay, we'll close that up. We use the same colors. So I'll go with some green. This is uh, lettuce. And butterscotch. And the sunset orange. Get a little bit more green on here. Move it around a bit. And you see, it, the pan pastels just stay on there really well. They don't, uh, they don't come off when you're playing around with it, dabbing it off and that type of thing. Get a little bit more green in there. So again, I'd let that dry now and uh, either co coat it with your favorite varnish. It doesn't have to be a spray of uh, Preserve Your Memories. It's, that's just my preferred uh, uh, sealer. I just really love how easy it is. But um, any varnish will do that works well with uh, polymer clay. And uh, basically that's, that's the technique. Uh, you can do them in lots of different colors. This one was done with... Uh, uh, cool, uh, cloudy blue and what was that one now? Mermaid and a wild plum uh, just for something really wild. Um, it's a great technique. I hope you really enjoy it. Um, to uh, For the leaves, leaves what I did was, let me get this guy out of the way, I just took a head pin and a few seed beads and uh, started with a seed bead for this one I'll use a crystal and a, a druck and another seed bead 
and that just fits into into the hole and then you roll this with a um, uh, round nose pliers until it it meets here and then you string them that way so that's curled like that and then you string it and this will want to spin around on you a bit so I put a spot of crazy glue in there just to kind of hold it and uh, then I can orient it the way that I want Let's get this guy moved around here sorry about all that movement so I just simply strung this on a beading wire with uh, size 6 seed beads and uh, and size 6 um, pearls and um, I think it, it makes a lovely necklace anyways I hope you enjoy this technique and I hope you try it and uh, I'll see you again next time bye so one quick amendment to this I almost forgot about these little leafy tube beads uh, so they're done basically the same way as I did the uh, uh, the leaf with just the alcohol ink put on dabbed off a bit put on until I'm happy with how much is on there and then sprayed with the uh, the spray sealer or coated with whatever sealer you want um, so afterwards then I've strung them and you can string them lots of different ways but uh, these are ones that I had made from before I uh, strung them on sari ribbon and just knotted in between uh, another way <clears throat> I'm still using the sari ribbon on this one but I put a uh, big hole um, ceramic beads in between but if I do them again I'd, I'd actually make those big hole beads because it'd be easy to do but it just helps keep the uh, two beads from sliding all over the place and uh, maybe we'll someday I'll do a finishing tutorial and show you how I finish sari silk and um, possibly making end, end caps to go with this so uh, anyways hope you enjoyed that and uh, see you next time bye